If you like birdies, this is your week. It is the John Deere Classic by Bold Prediction. I think somebody <laughs> goes minus 10 on one of those rounds. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com, being joined as always by my fellow golf betting expert, Nick Borman from wagertalk.com. We're going to break down the iconic John Deere Classic. Back in the day, <laughs> Nick, this was known as the Steve Stricker Open. Uh, he he would, would show, up, show up and win this thing. Um, we're going to break down the course. We're going to break down the field, go over total strokes gained. We'll give you some DraftKings darlings. We'll give you an outright winner, top 20 finishing position, and, of course, players that can trip you up. Let's take a look at the course. First, though, TPC Deer Run, par 71, and there is just not much to this course. Um, fairways are pretty wide open. The greens are pretty easy. It's not too long. Weather looks like it should be beautiful, so this is a birdie fest. Putting is going to be the name of the game this week. Um, you know, perfect example last week, Tom Kim, but like highest price favorite. He missed some makeable putts, missed the cut. Um, this week is going to be similar. Uh, Nick, the rough is not too penalizing. There are a couple of water hazards that I think will collect some, some wayward shots, but make no mistake about this course. I think minus 25 is your target winning score, maybe even lower. Like I said, I'm not going to be surprised if uh, someone shoots a minus 10. Uh, a couple of the par fives are easily reachable. There's multiple par fours that are pretty uh, pretty short. Only a couple of par threes that might test them a little bit. But then on the flip side, you've got one that's like 150 yards. So overall, there's just not a lot of defense to this course. There never has been. I think that's kind of how they like it. And we only got to minus 18 last week. I think they blow through that. Uh, the weather on Sunday kind of kind of held them up from the super, super low scores. So a couple of holes that I've got my eye on this week, and then I'll get your thoughts on the course. We'll start with the 10th hole, 581 yard par five. Very high risk, high reward. The fairway, not too difficult to hit off the tee, but the green has water right next to the green on the right side and it has a bunker on the left so if you're going for the green and two and you hit it on the green you got a very makeable eagle putt if you miss the green to the right you're in the water uh, that bunker can collect some balls and if you don't get a great lie that's another tough little bunker shot so uh potential bogey but if you bogey this hole you, you'd like you, that could easily cost you the, making the cut could cost you quite a few uh, finishing positions. So I like that whole uh, very high risk, high reward. Uh, the 14th hole, 357 yard par four. This one is you just swing for the fences. This is a green that's below the tee, potentially hittable for the longest guys. If they get a good kick, you could roll up there. Uh, but you see the roll off here and kind of off to the right. That's where most of the, the balls are going to end up. So then it becomes a, a chipping you know, kind of competition. And this is just a must birdie. You've got to go minus two, minus three on this hole throughout four, uh, uh, throughout four, uh, four rounds left off the tee. Not good. I just like this hole um, to see what the strategy is. There's gonna be some people that lay up because they want that, you know, 90 to hundred yard uh, pitching wedge. Others are going to get it right up uh, pretty close to the green. And then finally the 18th hole, 460 yard par four. There's a couple of little issues with this hole off the tee. Like you can see there's trees off to the right. There's bunkers on the fairway off to the left. So, you know, if you, you kind of spray it out to the left or the right, you've got a little bit of a trouble, troublesome second shot. And with the screen, you see the water that's on the left. People will absolutely hit the ball in that water. Um, so it's a pretty good finishing hole uh, for an easy course, maybe a little bit difficult. Now, if you hit the fairway, you got a really, really nice, easy approach shot uh, to set yourself up for birdie. So those are three holes that I like. Uh, what's your take on uh, TPC Deer Run here, Nick? Yeah, not much to the course as far as defense goes. It is a par 71, 7,200 and change as far as yards go. So kind of similar to last week as far as total yardage. One less uh, stroke on the par. There's only three par fives. Uh, both the greens and the fairways slightly larger than average by tour standards. Uh, rough, actually, it's kind of long. It's up to four inches, uh, which you know will make the lies a little unpredictable when you do miss. But because everything's a little bit more generous as far as hitting the target areas, it should again, as you alluded to, uh, uh, kind of go towards low scores. If you look back at you know the history of this tournament and the winners, I mean, it's been played here at TBC Deer Run since every year since 2000, uh, minus the COVID year, but. More than half of the winners have reached at least 20 under par. I think all but three since 2009 have reached 20 under par. So you're dead on the money as far as it's going to be 
uh, a shootout to say the least. And usually what we see in shootouts, uh, Andy and I were talking about this before the show is, you know, you kind of, you get a lot of long shots because it's hard, it's hard to predict. I mean, it's, you know, you, you, you're going to get guys like last week, uh, Batia and Tom Kim as your favorites and Batia had a good week, Tom Kim did not, but usually what you're going to see is a, a, a lot of guys that maybe well for us we would recognize the names but you might not or or but they're in the 75 or higher to one range as far as outrights go and they make a run last week andy it's crazy there was 50 excuse me there was 19 players in the field last week that ranked in the top 60 in the fedex cup that's it so it was only 19 of the top 60 in the fedex cup last week we knew that was a watered down field this week is very similar of those 19 players half of them so it was eight if you look at the final leaderboard on Sunday, eight of the top nine ranked in the top 60. So of those 19 uh, elite players, I don't know what term we're going to use for the, the best, the cream of the crop for that particular tournament, they actually all finished high on the leaderboard. It was like it was almost like there were no long shots that really had a chance to win in a watered down field, which is rare. Those are the tournaments usually you see the long shots win, and this would be one of those. And if you look back at the history of this tournament, you you know, so often you're seeing guys 50, 60, I mean, Michael Kim was like 300 to one. I mean, there's, there are big numbers that have won here. So I don't really know what to make of that other than I saw the trend. I wanted to point it out. I don't know if that means we should put all our eggs in the uh, top of the, of the odds board basket, or we should completely ignore it. And it was an anomaly and no, no way it could happen again. I'm not really sure, but I just wanted to bring it up because it was surprising to me. Uh, but skill sets I'm looking for this week, Andy, are similar to last week. You know, the winner is going to need to possess the ability to go low. That is Batia in a nutshell, he, and he did that last week. Uh, you got to have a low scoring average. You got to have a high birdie average. Uh, you got to be able to hit your irons pretty close again because you're going to need to make a lot of birdies here. So proximity to the hole, greens and regulation, both important to look at. And you got to be able to putt. You're going to have to make a lot of them to win. And so, you know, putts per green and regulation is a stat to pay attention to. Uh, and then, of course, just strokes gained putting. So simple formula, really. The ability to go low, hit your flush irons, and be able to roll the rock are kind of where I'm at. I'm not too worried about off the tee. I don't think there's a huge advantage um, one way or the other for distance or, or not. So uh, that, that's kind of where I'm at. And, you know, I can't really add a whole lot more to the course. I think you covered it pretty well, but I don't see a lot of uh, pushback unless the weather does something. But right now, there's a small chance of rain on Thursday morning. Kind of that's it. It kind of the, the rest of the week looks pretty solid, right around 80 degrees every day. Wind maybe a little bit on Friday, but that's it. Otherwise, it should be, uh, you know, allowing for low scores this week. Yeah, these tournaments can be difficult. I mean, there's there's no reason to, you know, spray the board with 10, 15 bets on on tournaments like yeah. this. There's just there's just so much unknown um, with it. You can have some really surprising results. I, like, I'll be honest, I I had a, a, pl- a parlay that involved Taylor Pendrith making the cut. He made it on the last putt. On yeah, Friday. he did. He was he was outside he was outside the cut. He makes a ten footer to get in by one shot. It was like it's a guy that you know should have been in the top twenty, like by all yep. all the stats yep. and everything. Like he should have easily been up there. Tom Kim misses the cut. Uh, he ties his nationality prop, like like on with two guys that missed the cut. <laughs> like, so there can be some. Very, I know I know it's golf. I know there can be very strange results every single week, but um. You know, just mind your P's and Q's this week. Um, you know, if, if you're a long shot, better. I get these tournaments. You know, you might be able to find some some really good good value. But uh, yeah, just be careful with the bankroll. Um, there could be some very surprising results. Let's take a look yeah. at the total strokes gained. Uh, this is the chart that we dissect. Who's been good last twelve, six, and three months? Uh, some some names we do not normally see on this chart. So Nick, walk <laughs> us through. What's our big takeaways from this week? Uh, well. The big takeaway is this list is the cream of the crop for this week. So, yeah, uh, not a lot of the big names. Uh, one surprise name, I didn't know this was even happening, was uh, Spieth back in the field this week. He hasn't played since 2015. He won his first PGA Tour event in 2013, then won again in 2015. Hasn't played since. Just gives you an idea of a guy that had success here, but it's just not a big tournament, so they don't. They usually kind of where their schedule is. It just it's, it makes sense to take off this week. Uh, Patrick Cantley was in the field, which I couldn't believe either way. He, he withdrew, so he's not on the list. But uh, – Kind of who you expect to see as far as if you know this tournament, if you watch it every year, these guys do tend to play here every single year. Seb Straka, winner last year. Uh, he's right there near the top, JT Poston. I think he's been back-to-back sixth place, I believe, is, is the last two years finishes here. So another guy that has played very well here. Danny McCarthy, I feel like we've talked about him recently over the last couple of weeks, just as a, a guy that can putt you know, 
no matter how how short or long of a window you look at, he ranks number one in strokes gained putting. So he's he's on the list. Jason Day, uh, Maverick Maverick McNeely, I like. He's a he's a quiet, uh, steady performer right now. Aaron Rye, who had a chance to win last week, I'm sure you saw that driver off the deck he hit, and it kept getting replayed from like 275 to you know real tight. So uh, nothing really surprising here, Andy. I, I I have it sorted by the the last 12 months, and last week it looked like the winner was going to be one of these top 10 guys all week long until finally on Sunday, Batia uh, kind of ran out of steam and so did Rye. And then of course, Cam Davis, who wasn't in the top 10, he was just a little outside of it. He was still in the top 25 though. Um, he ended up surging and grabbing the, grabbing that lately. But the last three months is where I would tend to look mostly here because this is guys that are playing well at the moment. And last week that proved to be kind of the guys that played well again, was the guys that were playing very well in the shorter term. So Sung Jai am certainly resurgent right now. He's the betting favorite uh, for good reason this week. Uh, Straka obviously going to get a lot of attention just for winning last year. And then uh, Davis Thompson is another name that again, if you're not one, you or I, Andy, you might not know the name, but very consistent over the last three months and definitely worth a look. Uh, but you know it's crazy. You can see Davis Thompson at seventy-five to one a couple weeks ago. Now you're seeing him at twenty-five to one in this field. So it kind of kind of takes away a little of the flair there. I threw on, as far as the notables goes. I threw Ben Griffin and Sam Stevens. They're both guys that are playing very well in the, in the three-month window. And Neil Shipley, I threw in there as the uh, guy that made a splash at the U.S. Open, turned pro, uh, and has actually had a pretty good showing uh, last week. So he's on the list here as well but no real surprises andy but uh this is the list of guys that have played the most consistent over the last 12 months but i would look towards the last three months and you'll see like jordan spieth maybe not the best of bat versus like a uh, denny mccarthy a sung jai or a sep straka instead love it uh if you guys could please hit the hit the like button it really helps the algorithm out helps us out lets us know wager talk is uh enjoying enjoying the results that we're getting for you guys leave us a comment tell us who you like this week should be a crazy one i'm actually kind of interested what people are doing on their one and dones um you know I, these sure. these tournaments you're using guys that you haven't used and i'm sure once we what's once, once we start getting into the later part of the year then it gets tough so uh, i had admittedly <laughs> my one and done last week so I'm sure I'm looking at guys like Aaron Rye and, you know, some of these others. So uh, leave us a note in the comment section. Tell us who you like this week. Let's go to players that can trip you up. And I will tell you one guy that I will not be using in my one and done is Mr. Jordan Spieth. Uh, the betting favorite for this tournament has not finished better than 29th in the last nine tournaments. This is the 21st best total strokes gained in this field in the last three months. And this is a course that requires a very hot putter, and he's minus 0 0.30 strokes gained putting last three months. That That is a laughable betting favorite. You want to talk about, like, I mean, you want to talk about name value alone? In what world is Jordan Spieth the betting favorite? No chance I'm using him in one and dones or DFS. I'm not betting on him in head-to-head -head matchups or top finishing positions. He's been a fade all season. I know it's a weak field. Uh, but his short game, which he's been dependent on uh, throughout his career, it's just not there. So to me, he's a favorite. Yeah, but he's a, he's a well. two-time winner, Andy. He's a two-time winner. Oh, 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 oh is he? <laughs> this, this is this the Patrick. I'm just Cantley trying to. Defenses. I'm preparing you. I'm preparing you for the guy that's going to bombard us on the, the comments. It's like George Speed, dude. What's wrong with you guys? So I just want, uh, I want to prep you. B bombard away. A lot has happened since Jordan Spieth has been a two-time winner of this one. So, I mean, <laughs> that minus 0 0.30 strokes game putting, that is a recipe for disaster yeah. at this course. Everyone's going to be able to hit the fairways. Everybody's going to be able to hit the greens. It's going to come down to putting and Spieth just uh, not there. So, Jordan Spieth, uh, that's my first player that can trip you up. Uh, I'll go to Keith Mitchell. He missed the cut last week on a course that required great putting. Uh, last three months, he's even slightly worse than Spieth, minus 0 0.33 strokes gain putting. So he's priced as a top 10 guy this week. Uh, he only has a couple of top 10 finishes this year. And last week just did not give me a lot of confidence. Also, uh, he's only finished 42nd here last year at this tournament. Um, previously, he only played in 2021, missed the cut there. He's a stay away this week. Again, I'm looking at these guys that, or priced in the top 10 that just have not been that good with putting. It's This course requires four rounds of really great putting, and Keith Mitchell, to me, not checking that box. And here's an interesting one for you, Nick. Denny McCarthy, he's almost too dependent on putting at this point. Like, when his putting isn't the best, 
he really struggles. Here are, la- here are his last five finishes. 31st, 32nd, 39th, 24th, and missed cut. And I know he's finished sixth the last couple of years here, but I just don't like his current form. And I know this is going to sound so crazy, but his putting over the last 30 days has dipped to plus 0.90. That it's <laughs> dipped. <laughs> Normally, it's like plus 1.3. And the thing is, the rest of his game just is not good enough to get inside the top 10. He's priced as a top 10 guy, and his putting just has to be white hot, not red hot, white hot. And it just hasn't happened for him. So Price is a top 10 guy. I'm uh, just not sure that, the, that uh, his entire tee to green game is going to be good enough if his putting is not you know, completely dialed in. So I think he's going to be a little bit overvalued this week. So Jordan Spieth, Keith Mitchell, and Denny McCarthy are three players that this week, I think, can uh, trip you up. So let's take a look at someone we don't think will trip you up. It is your outright winner. Who are we looking at this? Uh, who are we looking at this week, Nick? Well, listen, I always say it uh, when you get in these type of fields, you know, you, you you look at the majors, you look at the big signature events, you're going to say, oh, this guy's gotten a top 20 finish in 10 of the last 11 events. Well, you're not going to find that in this field. You're going to find guys that have gotten top 20 finishes in five of the last 11 events or maybe four, right? All right. So you got to temper your expectations as far as consistency goes. But Maverick McNeely, to me, is a guy that kind of checks all the right boxes. You got form, you got kind of skill set, and you got results at this tournament previous year. So solid form coming in. He's got three top 25 finishes in his last four starts. Pretty good. He also had several good finishes earlier this season. He had a couple top tens at the Waste Manager and Phoenix Open and the players. He's, you know, he's got a couple of, eh, whatever results in between. But again, you're going to have that with, you know, the names in this list. These aren't the elite, elite players. So, but he's got the potential. He's shown that he can play well in deep field. He's shown he can play well in putting contests. So he's kind of got that mix where he can sn- uh, sneak up on, you know, any field and any t- type of course and, and at least play well. Will he come through and win? Obviously that's a lot to ask, but 30 to one, I think is a pretty good number on him to do so. His real only weakness, unfortunately, is his irons. Uh, he, but he ranks 21st. Strokes gained off the tee, 12th strokes gained around the green, and 28th strokes gained putting. That's a pretty solid all-around player right there. And because of that, he leads, or excuse me, it all leads to a 10th ranking in total strokes gained this season. So very solid for a guy that you don't really think of as a top 10 player. Uh, His data points suggest that he hits the ball and can get around the course as well as those guys, but just hasn't, you know, doesn't get the consistent results. He owns the 12th best adjusted scoring average this season the 14th highest birdie average and again i think that's very important this week because you're gonna have to make him in bunches and finally good results here in this tournament he did not play last year but he finished tie for 18th in 2021 and uh, tie for eighth two years ago in 2022 so i like his chances to once again finish in that top 20 or top 10 with all we're looking for in the outright winner is just that sunday sweat uh, uh, to give us a chance come the final round. But uh, Maverick McNeely, I think he's going to play well. Take him on the outright market, 30 to 1. If you feel like we want to, back him up maybe on a top 10 or a top 20 as well, just in case he has that good week, but can't quite uh, shut the door. But I like Mag- Maverick McNeely this week, Andy, to play well. All right. Like Maverick McNeely this week, like his uh, backstory, kind of fun. If you have it, if you don't, if you don't know it, Maverick McNeely, uh, his, his dad's like one of the richest people ever. Like Maverick, the story is Maverick McNeely is like the richest guy on tour, except yeah. uh, his dad, <laughs> except his dad just like doesn't give him any money. Like Maverick McNeely graduated college and his dad was like, yeah, you can stay here, but you're sleeping on the couch and you're paying rent. Uh, so awesome. he's, he's got, it's, it's a funny story. It's a really funny story. If you, if you look it up and read about it, there's been a couple articles. Um, so it's, uh, I, 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 I kind of pull for him. Uh, I, I don't, for whatever reason, I think it's funny. Uh, let's take a look at some draft <laughs> Kings darlings here. Um, I, I was terrible on my draft Kings darlings uh, last week. We'll try and do better, but I, 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 I do have to say, I, I don't play draft Kings uh, the DFS that hard on these events. I, the, 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 Nick, the jury's in. I do way better at the events with the big name players. There's just more <laughs> stats. There's, it's a little bit more predictable. You go through my DFS record and it's like really good results at the majors and, and the other ones. So, um, you know, I, I tread, tread lightly with these tournaments. There's just a lot of weirdness that happens. And we'll start with Ben Silverman at 7,100. This is a guy that's made the cut. 
in three straight tournaments. Uh, this is coming off a bad run of finishes. So I like that he's turned his form around. Uh, his big weakness really is his lack of distance off the tee, but that's not an issue here on this short course. In the last 30 days, he's plus 0 0.97 strokes gained putting. So if he can have another really good putting week, then I like our chances here. Um, again, I when you have these shorter courses, go down the list of, of total strokes gained and see where these guys are struggling with strokes gained. And you know this is like the Brian Harmon, JT Poston type thing where – Guy like Ben Silverman, so what? So what? He, he doesn't drive it that far. This is the course where, you know, it really doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, Poston, I'm sure, is going to be a popular pick this week just for that reason. Um, you know, doesn't drive the ball long, but short game and putting is really good, so he should thrive on this. So Ben Silverman at 7,100. It's my first darling. Uh, next, Joel Damon. Uh, he's made the cut six tournaments in a row. I like that he's finished 25th and 10th in the last two tournaments he's played in. In those tournaments, Plus 1.47 total strokes gained. So we're just hoping that uh, Damon is on a heater. We can ride him for another week here. So um, I think 7,300 is really, really low on a guy like that. I mean, he's he's played, he plays the tough courses as well. So to get a guy that's got the experience like him at 7,300 feels like a great price. And then finally, Andrew Novak at 7,500. He's made the cut 10 out of his last 12 tournaments. His last two have been 20th and 14th, so he's shown us a little bit of upside. He's made the cut in the last two years here at this tournament, so at 7,500, just not sure we're going to do that better at that price point. I fully expect to get weekend points here from Novak, and if he gets us a top 20 finish like he's done in his last two tournaments, um, then it's a real steal. So the rest of my lineup is up at wagertalk.com. You can click on the news section, and articles are up there. Or you can go to Andy Lang's profile page. It's a free digital download. Gets you the rest of the lineup, as well as some total strokes gain, course overview, things like that. All of that over at wagertalk.com. Nick, what do you have up for uh, this week's tournament um, and for this week just in general over Wager Talk? Andy, this week's tournament pack is available and ready on my page at wagertalk.com. And, of course, you can get um, get that, which includes you know the pre-tournament plays plus all ads throughout the four rounds i've uh, been doing pretty well with adding like round score plays as we go through the week so continue to look to do that and then uh mls continues to be in full swing continues to be an awesome season number one again this year up 40 units got a midweek slate this week wednesday night games uh and then again of course on the weekend for saturday night as well so definitely a good week to check out like a uh, all access pass for the seven days to get the golf and two rounds of mls action uh, so all that's available right now at my page at which talk Nice. Let's take a look at the finishing position. Boy, you've got a guy out of left field. I did not expect to see this name. <laughs> Talk to us about yeah. Sam Stevens. What do you like from him this week? Yeah, Sam Stevens, uh, unless you're a real golf nerd like you and I, Andy, probably not a name you're going to be too familiar with. But the second year now, Tour Pro, he's playing some really good golf. Last week's tie for 10th finish at the Rocket Mortgage Classic was his sixth finish inside the top 15 in his last nine starts, which includes the RBC Canadian Open, the Myrtle Beach Classic, you know, that was an alternate field event, so another kind of watered down field, and the Valero Texas Open. He hits it a long way off the tee. He ranks in the top 25 in driving distance. And I know I said before that's not a huge metric, uh, but if you can hit it far and keep it in play, it's always going to be an advantage. And he ranks 35th in greens and regulation, while 25th and 35th don't sound great, maybe at, you know, the Open Championship in a couple weeks' time in this type of field where there's only one top 25 player in the world in the field. These are pretty dang good and high on the list of uh, ranking in this field. While some of his other season-long stats don't necessarily pop off the page, he's been doing his best work as of late. Over the last three months, Stevens ranks ninth in total strokes gained in this field. Uh, he did play here. Again, this is his second year on tour, so he did play here last year. He did miss the cut. But coming into that tournament, he didn't have one top 30 finish in 10 previous starts going into that week. So he just clearly was a different player than he wasn't playing sort of, you know, any sort of consistent golf. He is now, so I don't put any uh, worry or emphasis into last year's finish at all. I think this is just a completely new player, a guy that's kind of dialed in, seeing, seeing the golf course, seeing his shot shape well right now. So I think that alone, that confidence, and in a field like this, again, coming off a very, very good week again last week, I just love his chance to get into the top 20. He's two to one to finish top 20. I think that's a really good price on somebody that's been playing as consistent as, honestly, 
the top of this leaderboard and more consistent than Jordan Spieth, who you mentioned at what is this price under 20 to one to win the dang thing. So yeah, I like Sam Stevens as a guy that's under the radar who's been putting up the results and I think can have a good week again to at least catch top 20 ticket. Nice. Like it. Uh, this is the perfect week to try and cash on some of these guys that you're getting those, that yep. great plus money on these, on these top 20 finishes. So um, I'm with you. I, I was on Aaron Rye. Um, I cast a little bit on him. I, I, I really like, um, I really like this guy. I, he just seems to flourish on these, you know, like easier courses. So I'm looking more towards guys like him. I like your Maverick McNeely. What's your thought on Sung J M here? I mean, here's his, here's his last few finishes. Third miscut, eighth, ninth miscut, fourth, 12th miscut. I will tell you that those miscuts, those are all the majors. Yeah, you know, so I was, was going to say the same thing. Yep. That yep. This guy can't skip I did. the cut in a major, <laughs> except he's... I absolutely do, because I was I was looking at him last night, and I'm like, I saw the same thing. I'm like, all right, so the majors, whatever. But in a field like this, he's clearly the cream of the crop, and he's finished top 10 to basically every other event but the major. So, But he hasn't won since 20, 2020. So it's, it's like, do I expect him to have a good week? Yes. Will I bet him not win outright? It's hard to bet him a guy at that price. That's now that and we talked about Sung Jae because he's he is a consistent golfer. He is one of the better players, you know, on tour. He's one of the better best players in this field. But for whatever reason, just to not be able to close the door this long, I don't know. I'm not going to bet him at a price like this to do it all of a sudden. Will I cash him in a matchup maybe, or cash him in a uh, a parlay to make the cut or a top twenty, whatever? Yeah, maybe I'll get some money on him, but I won't bet him in the outright just because I don't think it's. I don't think it's worth it for him, but I do expect Sung Jai to have a good week. He's been playing very, very well, aside from the major. Yeah, I like math-wise and just the eye test. There's no reason that Sung J M should be the same price as Jordan Spieth, but we know what True. the books are doing. We, but we know what the books are doing, and this is what just like get you know. It, I roll my eyes at this because it's like, all right, you put Jordan Spieth as the favorite because you know people are just going to see the name and then you know take it, but you know. Then what do they do on the head-to-head matchups? Well, they put them against Jason Day. It's like, no, they're not going to give you Sung J.M. Like, <laughs> in the no, they won't. Like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, no, they'll take your money on him to do great, but they will not take your money <laughs> on him to struggle. So it's a uh, – That's George why they're Speed, in business. Man, <laughs> I know, I know. It's it's a, that's why it's why he's on players to trip you up, and it's the one yeah. guy this week that I just like. It is the big word of caution, like that. Like when I when I saw that when the odds came out and he was number one, I was just like, I knew exactly what they were doing. So uh, shame on you, books. Shame on you. So, um, the last the, the last guy um, I wanted to bring up just a little bit, JT Poston. I, I mean, he's a bet on this week. Is this guy's finished first and sixth at this course? We just talked a little bit about. Driving distance, these guys that struggle on the on the longer courses like Brian Harmon, and once you get a chance to to bet on a guy like this at a shorter course, like it kind of feels like an opportunity where you kind of have to, don't you? I like posting. I, I mean, if you go back to like the beginning of the season for us, we, I feel like I talked about the postman. Uh, it felt like every other week, if not every week, he was riding such a heater. He's kind of fallen off, you know, as of late. But you gotta you gotta look at you know, the bigger picture and kind of say, well, yeah, the last three months, I mean, this is, this is the biggest part of the PGA tour season. It's the, all of the majors have just happened. I mean, we had signature event, major signature event in three, three straight weeks. So is he elite with your Scotty Shufflers, your Xander Shoffleys, your Rory McIlroy's? No, but is he better than most of the players in this field? Yes. And I think you can see that even in some of the results, he still had good. He had, he had a tie for fifth at the RBC heritage, which was, was a signature event, a uh, tie for 12th at colonial, which is the Charles Schwab, uh, tied for 22nd at the Memorial. So it's kind of interesting there. He actually was playing pretty well and have good finishes and tough courses. Um, what will be interesting to see is how you know well he fares when you have to go low. But as you've alluded to before, he won here two years ago, and he backed up with a tie for six last year. So clearly he knows this place well enough that he should, and I do think he is one of the better players in this field. So again, if you don't like his price on the outright, look to get his money on him, most likely in uh, you know, a leaderboard or maybe a matchup. I'm just throwing out that that he's minus 105 to finish in the top 30 on DraftKings right now. That's just, pretty good. Yeah, just that's lobbing. Good. I'm just lobbing that out there that a guy who <laughs> flourishes on easy courses with uh, weak fields is my is almost even money just to get into the top 30. The guy that's finished first. Yeah, that's and six. That's a good find there. The last maybe. couple of years. 
good, good couple years. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about that. So, um, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us again. If you're not hit the like button, please do that. Leave us a comment. Tell us who you like. And uh, we got what we got another week of uh, birdie fest this week, but uh, the open championship right around the corner, end of the season, those tournaments are right around the corner. Um, so let's make sure we protect that bankroll, play it smart. Let's bring in a few units of profit, get ready for next week. Thanks for joining us. We will see everyone next week on Tea Time.